good morning students uh, today we are going to take up a very very beautiful and a very meaningful poem written by uh, william shakespeare the name of the poem is friends and flatterers now many of you might have already heard the name of uh, william shakespeare now he has been a very very famous playwright and poet of all the times and uh, many of his plays they are and the characters of the plays they are famous till now and the plays are uh, enacted even uh, today and the kind of poems he wrote they were they contained all kinds of human emotions and feelings of pain of happiness of friendship and so on so his literature the literature which shakespeare wrote it is endless so he's been a greatest poet and a, a playwright of all his times and the poem which he, we are going to take up today friends and flatterers it is really a beautiful poem because you know it is related to our life actually it uh, why makes us wiser it give the poet is giving a kind of advice to us in this poem now you know you know friends are a part and parcel of our life they are indispensable everyone uh, indispensable part of our life and every one of us uh, we have friends no but he tells us who are our real friends and who are our fake friends fake means which are not true who are not true to us no they are just for the sake of uh, saying name sake so he in this poem he distinguishes us he gives us some ideas some beautiful differenti- differences to make out who is a tr- uh, true friend now he distinguishes between a real friend or a pseudo now pseudo is a person who's fake who's not true a flatterer or a person who's fake and you uh, he impresses you with the flattery so he says that our true friends are not those Uh, who praise us in our good times but our true friends are those who help us who stand by us in our tough times so the friends who are true to you and they will stand by you in, in your difficult times and then the fake friends they are the ones who will use flattery for their interest they'll keep on fla- uh, fla- praising you they will keep on flattering you and once their interest is over or once you are in tough conditions or tough times you face tough times they will leave you like anything so let us uh, begin with the poem the friends and flatterers now uh, first i'll give you a reading of the poem so let us read together you have a book in your hand so you just keep your eyes in the book everyone that flatters thee is no friend in misery words are easy like the wind faithful friends are hard to find every man will be thy friend whilst thou hast wherewith to spend but if store of crowns be scant no man shall supply thy want if that one be prodigal bountiful they will him call and with such like flattering pity but he were a king but if fortune once do frown then farewell his great renown that they that fond on him before use his company no more he that is thy friend indeed he will help thee in thy need if thou sorrow he will weep if thou wake he cannot sleep thus of every grief in heart he with thee doth bear a part these are certain signs to show faithful friend from flattering foe so 
such a wonderful poem which is written by william shakespeare which describes now shakespeare is using kind of language which is very typical to him you know the words like the die thou you no know, they are very typical words which are were used by the poets of the, those times so let us begin with the first paragraph every one that flatters thee now here the word thee stands for you okay and we know what is flatters flatters means praises false praise okay so the poet says that every one who flatters you is no friend in misery so any one or every one who will keep on flattering you all the time he will not be a friend in misery now misery means sad times so any one who is flattering you all the time who is always saying good to you and good about you that kind of a person will never be a true friend in our misery in our sad times words are easy like the wind so he says it's very easy to say those words the flattery words no praise words it's very easy to say those words because he says words they are like wind you know uh, wind blows and it keeps on changing its direction every now and then same way the poet says that the words which are said or which are used by the flatterers they have no meaning they keep on changing their directions one one day they will say praise worthy friends to uh, words to you but once you are uh, in trouble they will leave you and they will find another person and they will say the same words to that person also so their words they are like wind as they keep on changing direction faithful friends are hard to find so he says faithful and true friends they are very very difficult to find we cannot find true friends easily the false friends the fake friends are available everywhere so most of the people around us who will keep on flattering us all the time they are not our true friends because their words they don't mean what they say and uh, they uh, the faithful friends they are very difficult to find so let us come to the second paragraph every man will be thy friend whilst thou hast wherewith to spend now he says that every man will be your friend thy means your friend so he says every man will be your friend when till till what time will be every man your friend till you have lot of money to spend so this line the second line whilst you hast wherewith to spend so the meaning of this line is while you have lot of wealth lot of fortune to spend on those kind of friends they will be your friend but if store of crowns be scant now the word scant means less and store of crowns is used here for money so the poet says once your wealth your fortune your store of crowns becomes less becomes scant no man shall supply thy want so or no man will be there to supply you what you need supply thy want want means what we need what we need and so all those people who are there with you when you have money they will always leave you when you have no money left with you and they will not be there to supply you what you want when you are in trouble so these are the two paragraphs now we come to the third one if that one be prodigal so he says now prodigal is a person who spend thrip who spends a lot of money you know without thinking on friends and on everyone so he says if you are that kind of a person a spend thrip who spends money without thinking bountiful they will call him they will him call so what will they uh, what will those kind of friends call you they will call you bountiful now bountiful means 
generous and large hearted so they will praise you using those words like bountiful and they will keep on praising you till you are spending money on them till you are serving them with money and with such like flattering pity but he were a king so he says those kind of people the fake friends you know till you have money they will call you bountiful generous and you know they their flattery will go to an extent to an extreme extent so he says and with such like flattering so he, they can um, uh, flatter you in uh, such a way which is extreme how how will it be extreme look at the fourth line pity but he were a king so their flattery will go to extreme and they will even call you king so they will say that it is pity that you are not a king so they compare you to a king and they say pity that you should have been a king because why because they are flatterers and they just want your services your money which you are spending on them so all these words they are just a flattery a false praise so he says these kind of people till you people till you are a spend thrift till you till you are serving them they will call you bountiful and generous and their uh, flattery will go to an extreme to to the heights of flattery you know they will reach the height of flattery and they will call you a king and they will say that it is a pity that you should have been a king now we come to the fourth paragraph but if fortune once do frown so he says but if your fortune if your luck if your money if your destiny if your fate once do frown is not good at, at for you so once your fortune is not good for you do frown frown actually word means angry so once your destiny or your fate is not happy on you no it's not smiling on you actually now uh, it's frowning on you that means you are facing a bad time you have lost your money then farewell his great renown so then what will happen all those friends who were with you till now and who were praising you like anything they will say farewell to you you know farewell you means uh, it means goodbye no we've heard the word farewell in your school also uh, whenever the class 12 you know the year ends and they are about to leave the school they are given a farewell so he says once you have lost your money and your fortune is not smiling at you then all those people who were with you the your false friends they will bid you farewell farewell his great renown now you will not be renowned with them that means you will not be famous with them at any more till now you were very famous with them because you had money and you were serving them but now they will say goodbye to your popularity they will you will not be famous with them at all they will go to somebody else they'll find somebody else who uh, whom they will flatter and get the uh, things done so that uh, they that fond on him before use his company no more so he says those kind of friends who used to fond or fond means give attention give lot of attention give lot of flattery to in order to get the favors done so those kind of friends who used to flatter him who used to give him attention they will no long be their company they will leave your company they'll go away from you and you will be left alone now we come to uh, the last paragraph on this page he that is thy friend indeed now the poet tells us about a true friend so he says a true friend who is your true friend that person he that is thy true friend thy means your and he word is here used for true friend so he says 
a person who will be your true friend who will be your friend indeed you know children we say this line a friend in a need is a friend indeed that means a person a friend who actually is a free friend in need when we need it that is our true friend so he says he that that is thy friend indeed he will help thee in thy need so he that for a true friend will help you in your need when you need it if thou sorrow he will weep so he says if thou thou means you if you are feeling sad if you are feeling sorrowful if you are in trouble he will weep he will cry he will feel your pain he will cry with you when you are weeping if thou wake he cannot sleep so he says that when you will be awake because you are in trouble maybe you are in pain if you are awake he cannot sleep so he will not be able to sleep that means till your till uh, the friend till his true friend is in trouble he will never be able to sleep and he will be able to feel the pain which the friend is going through okay so we come to the last paragraph now on the next page the thus of great grief in heart grief word means sorrow okay children so he says thus of every grief in heart so he says any kind of grief which we have in our heart even a little pain little sadness little sorrow we have in our heart he will be he with the dot bear a part so he will be a part of that sorrow doth here means does and bear a part means share so he will share with you your sorrows even if it is a little sorrow a little sadness so he will be there to share that also he will always be with you to share your sorrows and any kind of grief which you have in your heart these are certain signs to know so he the in the end the poet says that these are the signs which show a faithful friend from flattering foe so these are the signs which differentiate between a faithful friend a true friend a friend in need no from a flattering foe a pers- uh, f- differentiate a fl- faithful friend from a flattering foe the f- word foe is used for enemy so the poet goes to such an extent that he says those flattering people those flatterers actually they are not your friend actually they are your foes your enemies so they are as good as an enemy so it is always said that it is better to have an enemy than to have a flattering friend so the poet says that we should be very very careful actually the central idea the meaning of this the theme of this poem we can say is that we should be very very careful and children especially you people you know you are at such an age that you're growing up you're not that wise na so we should be very very careful while choosing our friends because you know a choice of a friend will make a lot of difference in our life if we choose good friends if we are surrounded by good people our life will go on smoothly and we will not fall into troubles but you know sometimes if we are if we choose wrong company um and wrong friends you know they can even land us in trouble and our life can be totally spoiled so that is why it is said a man is known by the company he keeps so a man you know he is known he is recognized by the kind of company he has by the kind of friends he has so if you people have good friends you will be known as a good person but if you have a bad friend you will be known as a bad person so we should be very very careful while choosing our friends so thank you for the day and children i hope you like the poem i want you to read this poem and try out the question answers then we'll discuss it again later thank you